I saw the fire from from, from the from where we lived. Um, I, for some reason, some of my appointments got canceled, and I was in the Linden area, so I came home earlier for a late lunch, um, or early lunch. I don't even remember what, what time that was, but uh, for some reason, just out of nowhere, those, those appointments got canceled. So I came home. As I was pulling into the driveway on Stadium Drive, I, I, looked, towards, I looked towards the school, and I saw a plume of black smoke coming up. And I thought that that instant that maybe the school was on fire or one of the portables out there were on fire. So that's why I jumped in my, my vehicle and drove over here. I, I drove at the, the front of the school and I didn't, I didn't see a whole lot. And um, um, so I, I parked on the side parking lot and um, I saw one officer in, on the playground. So I immediately ran over there thinking that uh, something was on fire. And then that's why I met another officer who stopped me at the gate before I got to the playground and motioned me back. And at that time, he, he took out his revolver and was looking up towards the portable. And, and again, I thought perhaps it was a fire of some sort. Um, so I ran from, from, from the side of the playground. I ran to the front of the school. And it just seemed like it took me forever to, to, to get to the front to the office. At that time, I saw some, um, I saw some teachers coming out. And they were motioning to me to come here. So I went to them. She said, your wife's OK, your wife's OK, your wife's OK. And I thought, again, there was a, f a fire. And then that's when I saw some ambulance come up. I um, also saw some more officers come up. And at that time, uh, St. Joseph House, uh, Hospital had a Beneflight uh, helicopter. And the helicopter was coming down. So I thought for sure that, that there was a fire someplace, that one of the buildings caught on fire. And there were some kids trapped in there. And they were to try and take them out. But as, as I went to the playground, um, as, as I met that officer, I saw some, what I thought at that moment was some, just some coats uh, on the floor, or on the ground, on the playground. And uh, later I found out those were bodies of some children who were shot. My initial reaction was to get to the school and, and see how I could help and see what was on fire, what was happening. And then um, as I got to the front of the school and uh, I met that one teacher, um, Susan Ulmer, and she she lived right across the street from us, and she was, I believe, at that time a reading specialist here. So she she you know calmed me down, and said, "Your wife's okay. Your wife's okay." And at that time, um, as I mentioned, the, the police were arriving, more more ambulance were arriving, and kids and and um, staff was coming out with kids. And I saw some of the kids that were, they had blood on them. From what I didn't know at that time, but I started taking kids and up to the front. And uh, we started doing triage, is taking the most serious kids. And, it's, and because I'm American Red Cross instructor, first responder, um, the, one of the ambulance drivers gave me a first aid kit to start bandaging some of the kids with uh, you know, some wounds to stop the bleeding. And uh, some of the kids were going to shock at that time too. So we tried to comfort these kids. And as we were there, parents were arriving. Um, more staff was arriving with more wounded, wounded children. Staff was screaming at the ambulance driver to, to, to come inside because there were more seriously wounded kids. They didn't want to move those kids. And, um, and, and more parents started arriving. And they, they tried to take their kids. And uh, the staff prevented them from taking them because they had to be you know, checked, checked, number one. And also because they can't just release them without uh, checking off a roster. And staff was trying to get the roster at that time. They move a lot of the, the, the kids into the, um, the cafeteria. And as they move the kids to the cafeteria, they, they lock the door. They want to make sure that uh, all the kids were accounted for, for before they just started giving the kids out to anybody. They have to verify through ID that the, this children or this child could go with, with that adult. So that created some, some issues there. I, I recall after, after the ambulance took a couple of my kids away and then the, the other kids were being attended to, then one staff member motioned to me needing some help to try to get in the cafeteria with that daily roster who was here and uh, they were being blocked by the, all the parents that trying to get in. They were forming a line, the parents were trying to form a line, and so I helped her uh, banging on the door and, and say that she has a roster, she has a roster. Um, you never know how you're gonna react, to, especially when you're seeing children in, in, in wounded like this. And I think that what really hit home for me is when I walked in the playground and I saw a bullet hole in one of those uh, tetherball posts and uh, you know, the, thick metal, they're about the four inches diameter, and and almost cut it in half. And I said, how can one of these children ever survive a, a direct hit from you know, AK-47? When you see a child crying and bleeding, you just help. That's it. You help. Um, nobody, nothing can prepare you for something like this. And I know a soldier gets prepared to go to war, but you know, if you don't experience war, you don't know what it is until you're there. And then you don't, you don't know how you're going to react until 
until you're in that situation. But uh, I guess for me, the comforting part was knowing that my wife was okay and she was helping. So I did the same.